As World War II came to an end, eight million soldiers and sailors were repatriated to America from Europe and the Pacific. Operation Magic Carpet was launched in late 1945 by the War Shipping Administration, and it executed the largest combined air and sea lift ever achieved in only 360 days. It was a massive effort from the government, the military, several institutions, and even generous civilians to bring the boys, and even their new foreign wives, back home. Setting the stage. Planning for demobilization started soon after the United States joined the war, a lesson learned after World War I ended. Logistics to bring the soldiers home, as well as preparations for the long-term development of national resources and employment stabilization, were all considered. The post-war agenda was published in November of 1942. It included plans for demobilization and objectives for private enterprise, public activity, social security, population, manpower, financing and fiscal policies, administration, and also international collaboration. A few months later, the Demobilization and Readjustment Report was submitted to President Franklin D. Roosevelt and made public soon. Aimed at an orderly and efficient readjustment of the national economy by reassimilating military personnel into normal conditions, the report stated that, quote, the ideal objective of plans for military objectives for military demobilization should be to effect a rapid and orderly status and restore them to their homes and families and peaceful occupations. Practical considerations included, quote, one, the continuing need of the country for the preservation of armed security. Two, the availability of transport facilities and their effect on repatriation. Three, the organization of facilities and methods for the demobilization of members of the armed forces and for their assimilation into civilian life. Early plans for Operation Magic Carpet began in mid-1943, even if the war's outcome was unknown. More than 8 million uniformed Americans from all branches of service were scattered across theaters around the world, and it was a priority for the U.S. Army to bring the troops back as soon as the war ended. Army Chief of Staff General George Marshall established several committees to oversee the operation's logistics, but the War Shipping Administration, or WSA, soon took charge. President Roosevelt established the WSA in 1942 to deal with shortages in civilian shipping tonnage available for the military. Though human and technical resources from all branches were needed, the WSA had the power to, quote, control the operation, purchase, charter, requisition, and use of all ocean vessels under the flag or control of the United States. The organization could also allocate American vessels, quote, for use by the Army, Navy, other federal departments and agencies, and the governments of the United Nations. As the operation's strategy came into focus, the WSA provided cargo carriers and a fleet of troop ships, while the Coast Guard also contributed. However, the Navy could not participate in the original sea lift from the European theater. Given that the war in the Pacific was not over, the Navy was preparing for the imminent invasion of the Japanese home islands, and therefore unwilling to lend warships for transportation roles. The task would be the sole responsibility of the Army and the Merchant Marines. Home Alive. As victory looked imminent, a public outcry to bring the soldiers home by Christmas took off with the slogan, Home Alive by 45. By May 8th, 1945, known as Victory in Europe Day, over three million men and women were in service with the U.S. Army throughout Europe, Africa, and the Mediterranean. The WSA then ordered the conversion of 300 Liberty and Victory cargo ships to transport sailors back from Europe, and the first homeward-bound ships left for America in late June 1945. However, the operation could only be propelled into rapid motion after the unconditional surrender of Japan, and it officially commenced on September 6, 1945. During the war, American ships had taken an average of 148,000 sailors a month to the European theater, but following VE Day, the figure rose to 435,000 taken back home every month. The Advanced Service Rating Score, or point system, determined the soldiers' eligibility, aimed at the systematic and equitable transition to a peacetime military. Points were accrued for months served, days in combat, wounds, special services, awards, number of dependents, and marital status. Exceptions were prisoners of war recovered from camps and taken to hospital ships, as they were among the first to return. Many of them were too delicate to travel by sea, and thus were airlifted. Millions of flying hours were amassed by transport and cargo aircraft 
by the Army's Air Transport Command and the Navy's Air Transport Service. But the number of people returned by airlift was dwarfed by the numbers carried by ship. The system changed several times due to demands from the home front and soldiers to speed up the process. Protests took place in Paris, the United Kingdom, and even in Manila, Philippines, where 4,000 soldiers stormed into the city hall. By October, the Navy joined the effort with its ships in the Pacific. Numerous warships were hastily converted into temporary transports, and aircraft carriers were conditioned with three- to five-tiered bunks to accommodate thousands of men in relative comfort during each trip. These were the preferred vessels, for there was entertainment and good food on board. In mid-October, the Navy donated its newly commissioned USS Lake Champlain carrier, fitted with bunks for over 3,000 troops. By November, the USS Washington battleship joined, as did many other warships, hospital ships, and assault transports. By then, the European operation included more than 400 vessels, ranging from 300 to 15,000 passengers on board ocean liners. The United States also exchanged the British RMS Queen Mary for 10 smaller American ships. While some soldiers returned on luxurious liners, others had to travel in bunks on board cargo ships. Meanwhile, the fleet in the Pacific consisted of 369 ships, including 222 assault transports, 6 battleships, 18 cruisers, 57 aircraft carriers, and 12 hospital ships. By December, the operation in the area reached its peak, with 700,000 troops returning home. Back in American territory, there were hospitable civilian efforts to take the soldiers home for Christmas. About 150,000 servicemen were stranded on the West Coast, but as conveyed by an Army private, simply stepping on U.S. soil was, quote, the best Christmas present a man could have. Several civilians gave away their train tickets to returning servicemen. A trucker from Colorado drove 35 veterans to their homes in 34 points between Denver and Dallas, and taxi drivers from Los Angeles delivered people thousands of miles away to Chicago, Manhattan, and Pittsburgh asking for nothing in return except the cost of gas. At the National Tree Lighting Ceremony on December 24th, President Harry S. Truman exclaimed, quote, This is the Christmas that a war-weary world has prayed for. Special Operations Between May and September of 1945, nearly a million and a half Americans were repatriated. By the end of 1945, Less than 700,000 soldiers from the U.S. Army and over 3 million and a quarter sailors from the U.S. Navy remained stationed around the globe. The European stage of the operation was completed by late February 1946, and by April, more than 3 million Americans were already home. Furthermore, not only soldiers were transported. The WSA and the Army converted 29 troop ships into special carriers for about 500,000 foreign women who married American soldiers during the war. The U.S. Congress had passed the War Brides Act due to political pressure, and the newlyweds could enter the U.S. in an offshoot called Operation War Bride. British Alma Annan married American soldier Chester Letke in 1945. In an interview with the National Museum of the Pacific War, she would later recall that, quote, They gave us wonderful food on board. Compared to what we had in England, it was terrific. They gave us chocolate ice cream. I ate so much chocolate ice cream that I didn't want any more when I got to America. Operation Magic Carpet also included 48 hospital ships, which brought about half a million wounded soldiers home. Meanwhile, the trips also served to repatriate almost half a million German and 53,000 Italian prisoners of war to their homeland in Europe. General Marshall stated that it hadn't been as much a demobilization as it had been a rout. In April of 1946, 29 troop transports carried 200,000 soldiers and sailors from the Asian theater in China, Burma, and India. Soon after, Operation Magic Carpet was over. The remaining troops still in the Pacific came home by September, and many bodies were also returned to the U.S. at the request of their families in late 1947. Operation Magic Carpet would be one of the most outstanding achievements of the entire war. On average, 22,222 Americans were transported home every day for nearly one year straight, giving way to what is regarded as the most well-known baby boom in history. Thank you for watching my video. If you enjoyed it, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our Dark Documentaries channels for more historical information. And don't forget to leave a comment below.